me as we welcome Pastor Busola. Okay. Okay, church. Uh, we're here because of one person. Who is that person? Jesus. So, shall we just appreciate Jesus? Not me, just Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Our Father and our God, we want to give you the first due of this segment of, you know, the, this service. And we say, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your rain that you poured upon us even since we started this morning. Thank you for the hearts of worship. Thank you for filling our mouths with new songs. Thank you for cleansing our hearts. Father, thank you. Thank you because it's only the living that can praise you. Thank you because we are alive today. And we praised you. And we will continue to praise you. So we commit this segment into your hands, Lord. Holy Spirit, our teacher, our comforter the breath of the living God, we ask that you will please teach us. Amen. That you open our eyes to those complex precepts of your kingdom, to those hidden things, those hidden treasures that we would each understand, that we will hear you in our language. Father, I'm just here as an empty vessel. I ask, Lord, that whatever residue of self remains in me, you will cleanse. Amen. And that you will fill me. Amen. And you will use me. Amen. Speak to your people, Lord, Amen. for your servants are listening. Amen. Thank you, Father, Thank Lord. You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to say a big thank you. Um, so I prepared a speech. Let me, let me read my speech anyway. <laughs> ah, goodness. God is good. Oh, goodness. Jesus is good. So this, this, this is a house that, you know, is not a strange land. Is not a strange land. This this is home. Amen. Amen. Am I accepted as part of your family? Yes. Okay. So I want to thank you for the invitation to minister yesterday at your women's conference. Thank you to all your women leaders. Thank you very much. And I want to say a big thank you to the father in the house. You know, if father says, "Do open the door," nobody dares to open that door. Yes, but he allowed you to open the door. And I thank the mother in the house, Pastor Simi, for also allowing me to come and celebrate with you all yesterday, and also for allowing me to minister to the church today as, you know, the women just rise up in thanksgiving. Thank you very much. I'm always glad to fellowship with this family of God. Um, I love the atmosphere of love and affection that you have allowed the Holy Spirit to create in you. There are things about atmospheres, you know. But before I go into my message, this was something that happened that I picked up yesterday when we went to the church to pray. And during the night, it really troubled me throughout the night. And I want us to rise up. And we're going to pray against the spirit of violence in this city. I don't know why, but I can tell you I struggled during the night. 
and I couldn't understand why I was struggling. And God said, there's a spirit of violence hovering over the city. So I just want us to begin to command that atmosphere to shift. Say, so we stand against you, spirit of violence, over Kaleen, over Hakka Heights, over the environment, and especially where your church is. We stand against that spirit of violence in the name of Jesus. And we release, begin to release the spirit of peace. Release peace. Release the spirit of peace. Because we come as children of the Prince of Peace. We release the spirit of peace over Kaleen. We release the spirit of peace over Hakka Heights. We release the spirit of peace over this environment. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Um, you may be seated, please. Thank you very much. Um, today, I will share with you about knowing your identity, knowing who you are. Um, many people go through life without knowing who they are or who God made them to be or the identity that they have in Christ as newborn children of God. But, you know, it's up to us to discover our identity in Christ. One thing I want to let you know is that each person's identity flows from God. You don't determine it. And I will explain why. God determines who you are and who you are to be because he makes us to fit into his divine grand purpose. Okay? We often talk about destiny without really understanding, you know, that knowing who you are is a major component of fulfilling destiny. Um, suppose a scientist doesn't know that he's a scientist and he thinks his destiny is to be an artist. How do you think he will fulfill his God-appointed destiny if he's walking in a different lane or running a different race? At the end of his life, both he, he would have been cheated of what he was supposed to, you know, he was made to be, and what the world would have benefited from him. For a believer in Christ, the Bible tells us who we are in Christ. If you don't know anything else about who you are, see your identity in what the Bible says you are in Christ. So what do I mean by saying we each have a God-given identity? How many people agree with the fact and truth that Jesus existed before he was born as a human being? Amen. Thank you very much. Likewise, we were spirit beings before we were given human bodies. We existed before we were given human bodies to come into the world. There's a divine purpose and agenda for your life. And the primary divine purpose is to bring about God's kingdom to the lives of men on earth. You know, when Jesus taught us the prayer, he says, uh, thy kingdom come. Amen? Amen? That will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. That is the sum total of all of our existence. We're created for his pleasure. So when I talk about you existed before you were given a human body, what do I mean? Let's quickly look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. Verse 4 says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah existed as a spirit, as a spirit being, before he was placed into the womb. God knows every single detail about you. You know, Ephesians 1, 4 says, just as he chose us in him, in Christ Jesus, before the foundation of the world, he chose you, he chose me, before he created the world. You existed before Jesus, before God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit says, let there be light. You existed Ah, it's deep, isn't it? Yes. It is deep. Your identity flows from God the Father because he made you. And you have an identity 
through Christ because of the new covenant in his name. If God knows exactly who you are, who he created you to be, who he called you to be, doesn't it make sense to go to him to know your identity, to ask him who he says you are? I'm going to encourage everybody to read Psalm 139. Read it in as many different translations as you have, just so that you fully understand it. But I'm going to read a couple of verses from Psalm 139. If you please turn to Psalm 139, verses 16 to 17. I will be reading a translation called The Voice. How many people, how, who is familiar with that translation, The Voice? It's wonderful translation. It breaks things down beautifully. So verse 16 says, Psalm 139, verse 16, I'm reading the voice translation. You see all things. This is talking about God. You saw me growing, changing in my mother's womb. Every detail of my life was already written in your book. Are we following? Yes. This is before the baby came. Okay, before you came, before I came, you established the length of my life before I ever tasted the sweetness of life. Your thoughts and plans are treasures to me, O oh God. I cherish each and every one of them. How grand in scope, how many in number. That talks about destiny. So who are you? You don't know who you are. It doesn't matter how much you pray about destiny. You can't fulfill destiny because you don't know who you are. It's difficult. It's a long route to a very close place. So the one thing you want to find out is who are you and whose are you? Whose are you? Who are you and whose are you? We have an adage in my language that says, it's only a bastard that would point to his father's house by saying you deny your heritage. Whose are you is a big component of who you are. So Sister Simi would always introduce me, and I always like my introduction to be, this is Busola Akai a child of God. That's who I am and whose I am. Finish. There's nothing greater than that. Busolo Oke, okay, child of God. And I love to call myself princess because I am, my father is king, king of kings. You get what I'm saying? I'm royalty. And I carry myself with the awareness of that royal blood flowing in me. The royal blood came when Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. He made me royalty. So when I carry myself like royalty, people wonder, is she royalty? Yes, I am. And that gives me confidence. And for as many people who are in Christ Jesus. You are royalty. I have my baby in the house, and I always love to call her double princess because she's royalty as the daughter of the Most High King, and she's royalty from Elisha. You get it now? So she's double princess. I'm not talking about Pastor Simeon. <laughs> So can you imagine if the son of a king who belongs to the royal family acts like a beggar? How would he look to the nation? So it is when a child of God doesn't know who he or she is. You will not recognize your worth or the value that God has placed on you and in you. Your work or job does not define you. Don't get your identity from what others say or don't say about you. Don't allow social media to tell you who you are. Don't let those likes determine who you are. Don't get your affirmation or self-esteem from anybody else. Let your worth 
be derived from who God say you are in Christ Jesus. See yourself through the eyes of the Father God that gave his son for you. That's how precious you are to Father God. So you should learn who you are by what the person whom you trust the most says about you. You should learn who you are from the person who can never disappoint you. You should learn who you are from the person who would always be by you. And who is that person that can fulfill all of those things? It's only God. Nobody else, not your husband, not your children, not your father, not your mother. The only person who can be everything to you is only God. So how, what do we do now? What do we do now? The first thing you need to do to get to that place of knowing who you are is to know God. Is to know God because you want to know whose you are. Prince. You see, I said Prince. He, he looked up. Because why? <laughs> he knows whose he is. And there are other princes here. But he knows he comes from the royal family. So when I said prince, that's kind of like his title, you know, even on earth. So the first thing he does is when, I, when he's anywhere and somebody says prince, he just has him there talking about him. And he turns around and he answered yes. <laughs> okay. But how is he able to do that? It's because he knows his father is king. So you need to know who your father is. Know God, okay? Get to know God, the father, through the Bible. Invest and develop in your vertical relationship with the father. You can know the father when you know the son, Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus said it in John chapter 8, verse 19b. John 8, 19b. Jesus said, you know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known the father also. And he said that so many times. When you read the Bible, especially the book of John, you know, reading the book of John would show you who Jesus is and would help you come into a deeper understanding of who the Father is. So when we read Old Testament, now, let me say something. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not changing. Do you get what I'm saying? Whether Old Testament or New Testament, he's not changing. The central theme of God's character is L-O-V-E, love. It's just demonstrated in different ways because of the settings and also because of what Christ did to change it all. Are we getting it? God remains the same. So, you know, when I was a young Christian, I was sharing with somebody yesterday, I was crazily in love with Jesus Christ. I mean, talk about a passionate love affair with Jesus Christ. It was that passionate. But God the Father, I'm like, ah. That was from the Old Testament. <laughs> it's a consuming fire. <laughs> Let me just be very careful with him. But by the mercies of God, I finally got to understand that God is not scary. Father God is not scary. He loves us. And the rules he gave under the Old Testament was to preserve them. Amen? Amen. Okay. So we know that he, all, everything he did was motivated by love. And the more you know God, the more you will be like him. And the quicker you will become who you were made to be and through jo that journey, discover who you are and be free. We're still talking about freedom here. You know, you, there's an expression that says um, somebody is um, comfortable in their own skin. It means the person has self-awareness, they know themselves, and they've accepted themselves, and they love themselves the way they are. But it's a journey. Not everybody gets there immediately. And you know, when Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, you can never love your neighbor if you don't accept and love yourself. If you're still struggling with who you are, you're still struggling with the way you look, you're still struggling with where you are, 
You can't love nobody else. Because it says, love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't even say love them more than you love yourself. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? So what's the next thing we can do in this journey of knowing who we are? Receive the love of God offered through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Receive the love of God offered through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. By grace, you have been saved, not of your own works, lest any man should boast. That's what the Bible tells us in Romans. And 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called what? The, sons of God. the children of God. That's the love God has given us. And that's where I derive my identity from. I am the child of God. That's the bedrock of my identity. By his mercy, he's given me some other titles. But the core of who I am is what? Who? So, 2 Corinthians, now this is where it gets really interesting. Oh, thank you so much. My first um, picture. Yes, please. Can you show the first picture? And, I, and I'm, you know, so we're talking about the child of God, but I'm going to show you some graphics here, some visuals. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.17, while we're waiting for that to come up, says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Um, we talked about everybody being spread beans. So we were all born. So you wonder, how about those who never came to Christ? Oh, yeah, they have an identity. But you have a new identity when you come to Christ. Do you get it now? You have a new identity when you come to Christ. So you were born, and then you get to this crossroad where Jesus says, I stand on the door, gentleman Jesus, and knock. If any man opens the door, I would come in and sup with him. Revelation chapter 3. When you open that door and he comes in, you now become newborn. And you enter into a totally different identity. You now enter into that identity that God ordained before the foundation of the earth. When he chose you for his grand Purpose. You get it now? So there's a divergence of lanes. So here is where you are. This is a lane for those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ. They continue with that old identity, whatever it is. But here, when you come to Christ, you take this new path. And it leads to whatever it is that God has ordained for you to be. In Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? For example, you wonder, is it not the same God that created everybody? Yes, it is. But do you think God would bring, I mean, he's no respecter of person. He can do anything. Do you get what I'm saying? But you will not expect somebody who just left, um, give me an example here. Somebody who just did a all-night at a bar, drinking, drunk, to come in this morning and stand on this pulpit and preach the kingdom. Can he not do it? God can use anybody. Do you get what? But in the natural order of things, that's not what you're going to expect. Do you get what I'm saying? But then you can, also, you can definitely expect and accept somebody who spent all night on their knees coming in here, and when he says hallelujah, you know, there's a move of the Holy Spirit. You see the divergent? Okay, I, I just want to make sure that we're, we're getting it. So, and the Bible says here, when for those people who give their lives to Christ, in John chapter 8, verse 36, it says, therefore, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. So, again, God created everybody. The person who doesn't accept Jesus Christ takes this path, but the person is not living in freedom. You get it now? The person is living, they're not in prison, but they're not free. 
free from what and free from who. They are under the domination and the control of Satan. But when you accept Jesus Christ, you, have, you walk the path of light and you are under the control and lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the difference there. So you don't live under condemnation. You don't live under fear. You don't live under fear of what's going to happen to you. As long as you remain in him, you know, he says, he that overcometh, his name will never be removed from the book of life. You continue and you have that hope of heaven and hope of all the good things. So don't let the enemy cheat you out of your rights and privileges as a child of God and joint heir with Jesus Christ. So what else do you do? Know God's truth and make it your truth. You know, um, we shared yesterday that many people know Jesus as the way, but many people don't preach Jesus the truth. And it's the truth that sets you free. And the truth you, comes from the word of God, and Jesus is the word. So you know the truth by reading and meditating on the word of God. Jesus said in John chapter 8, he says, um, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So first thing, the way sets you free. The truth sets you free. The way sets you free by grace. The truth sets you free when you now invest in reading the word of God. And then you begin to live the abundant life that Jesus came to give in John 10.10. 10. Are these things making sense? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's like cause and consequence. The way, by grace, you are saved. The truth, you invest time in the word. Are you getting it? And then the life. He has come to give you life and life in abundance. That's the equation. So the Bible says here, sometimes we read the word of God and it's just lodged here. How many people have been in that place where it's just here? You read it, you read it, you read it, and everything is here. Because when, when things begin to happen in your life, you can't pluck it to address those things. It's because the word is still here. But when that word gets into your heart, it solidifies into truth. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence from for out of it springs out the issues of life. So you've got, when you read the word of God, meditate on it. Say it over and over and over again until it moves from here to here. The word that is here doesn't do good. It will fly away. You get it now? It has to go here before it can begin to produce. So, yes, you read it. You, know, you say, I'm reading this thing. It's not making sense. It's okay. Continue to read it. One day it's going to make sense by the word of God and by the, the sprinkling of the blood. It's going to make sense. Amen? Amen? And when you read, ask the Holy Spirit. You know, like we prayed this morning, Holy Spirit, teach me. Huh? Lead me into all truth. You continue, you don't give up, you never give up. Take another translation. Maybe you started with King James because that is, seems to be the pious one. But King James is not working out for you. Please move on to NIV. Are you getting it? If NIV is not working, there's passion. We are in an age where we have no excuse for not getting the truth from our head into our hearts. There's no excuse, especially here. I mean, especially in this our generation in this dispensation. We have so much. We have so much available for us and available to us. Hallelujah. So the truth of God will transform us and change us. You know, there's this story about, you know, Peter and John when they went and they saw this beggar by the, by the beautiful gate of the temple and they healed, they healed that beggar. They said, silver and gold, 
they don't have, but what they have, they have give in Jesus' name, rise up and walk. And people were amazed. These were ordinary men, fishermen for that matter, you know, but they were able to do extraordinary things in the name of Jesus, and that's who we are. That is who we are. That is what, you know, we have access to that power. We have access to that authority as children of God. And people marveled. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. And they said they marveled when they saw these untrained men doing these miraculous things. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. In the marketplace, do people see Jesus in you? What's your testimony in the marketplace? The marketplace is your school or your place of work or your place of business. Do they see Jesus? Do they see there's something different about you? They need to do that. Number four, declare who God says you are daily. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God loves me. And say it as if there's nobody else on earth except you. And you're the only one that God loves. You have the right to do that. It's every man for himself. God loves me. Until it moves from where? From your head to where? Your heart. Every morning, stand in front of your mirror. God loves me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. From my head to my toes, I am beautiful. I am the apple of God's eye. Look at me. Shape your lele. You know, you, 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 you tell yourself those things. You tell yourself those things because that is what the word of God says. You don't need anybody to tell you. Do you get what I'm saying? You don't wait for somebody else to tell you. You don't even need to wait for your husband to tell you. Yes, it's good for husbands to say it. It's wonderful. But guess what? Let the lover of your soul tell you that, man, you are a rose like no other rose. Is there in the Song of Solomon? Or you think the Song of Solomon is only meant for lovers? No, it's a love song from your father, your lover. Who is his name? Jesus. You are going to be his bride. Yes or no? Yes. Or you are just going to be part of the attendance at the bride? Oh, so when you, read, when you read the Bible, personalize it. You get it now. Or maybe you are a man, and never once has your wife said, ah, ah, that suit looks good on you. Hey, look at my husband. Oh, no worry me. It doesn't matter. God will tell you that. Are you getting it? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, all I'm saying is coming from the Bible. He says, beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the big basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Verse 9 says, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, wanting nothing. There's nothing bad about the person God has created because you were fearfully and wonderfully made, and my soul knows it too. You know, the people would always question identity. Even they came, they questioned the identity of Jesus Christ. And for most of his life on earth, Jesus contended with questions about his divine identity. That's why we are always struggling with identity. Do you get what I'm saying? The same way, we have to know in order to contend for your identity. You have to know who you are so that you can contend. People can box you by the color of your skin, by how you look, your height, your shortness, your width, or your thinness, whatever, they box you in. But you've got to contend and fight for who you are. I was listening to a lady the other day, and she said for most of her years, she couldn't move forward because um, she happens to be Latino, and she happens to be, I guess, maybe in the film world and all that. And they keep saying, we can't cast you until we have cast 
the Caucasians because that's where the money comes from. So she carried that identity. She can never be cast. She's an actress. She can never be given a role because she's this. And then finally, she was like, wait, for how long is she going to continue living her life this way? And she broke out of it. You have to contend for your identity. The devil does not want you to fulfill that grand purpose for which God put you into this human skin that we are carrying right now. So let's look at the story of Jesus. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. But I'm going to read very quickly where he says, verse 13, and I'm reading all the way through verse um, 19. He says, who do men say I, the son of man, am? And some say John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah. They gave all kinds of reasons. You know, he gave an identity, son of man. Do you know the meaning of son of man? Huh? Son of who? Joseph. That's, but was, was, was that his identity, his divine identity? What's, what was his divine identity? What is his divine identity? What would be his divine identity? But they said, son of man. That's what they called him. And if he had lived as son of man, would he have gone to the cross? No. Because it was the son of God that was supposed to go to the cross. If Jesus did not know who he was, he would never have gone to the cross. If he had taken the identity men gave him as son of Jesus. Do you know how many times when he wants to say something, they say, do we not know you? We know your brothers. We know, your, we know, we know the abuelo you came from. We know, the, you know, we know your cottage. Uh, what, who are you? But he knew who he was. And so finally, he turned to his disciples and said, OK, that's the world. That's social media. But who do you say I am? And by the mercies of God, the Holy Spirit just put the right words upon the lips of Peter. And he said, you are the Savior. You are the Messiah. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Whose is Jesus God's? So you know who you are and whose you are. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we have to declare God's truth and then begin to watch how it begins to transform you. You know, Ephesians chapter 4 talks about we should remove the old. Are my pictures not coming up? Okay. We should remove the old to take on our new identity. So, like I said, we, we are all in the world, we were all born until we get to the point where we give our lives to Christ. And at that point when we give our life to Christ, oh, I'm, I was looking for this one, it's not showing here. So you have to remove the old. Thank you for pointing it out to me. You remove the old. Can you, can you go back one slide to the picture of the crossroad? Because yes, you see this crossroad, can you see? You see, this is this, is this guy. And Jesus was knocking at the door of his heart. He has to make a choice. That path, see how shadowy it is? He can continue on his natural life. And this other one that has light, that's if he chooses Jesus Christ, he gets a new identity. Okay, then we go to the next slide. Ephesians 4 says, put off the old man. If any man be in Christ, he's what? Newborn. I'm not saying born again because that word has already been so used and people misunderstand it. You become newborn. Amen? Amen? You put off. And then what do you do when you put off the old skin? You, you put on. You see this new baby? You see the old man? Can you see the difference? It's, not, it's strategic. The old man is old. The older person, the one that put off. You put off and then this new baby here, you put on. Hallelujah. And we're coming to the end of my message. Then you learn to walk in love. We learn to walk in love. John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. This is you getting to know who you are. 
It says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all we know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love forgives. We have to love because that's in our DNA. You know, when you come to Jesus Christ, there's a blood transfusion. You get a new DNA. You put off the old, you put on the new. The same thing with inside. It's internal. Okay? So we get to love and then... Now, as a new person, you have access. You have access to everything that Jesus has. All authority. When he was living in Matthew chapter 28, he said, all authority has been given unto me. In my name. Do what? Do all these wonderful things. Because all authority has been given. And Ephesians says that we are seated with Christ Jesus. Can we please go to that last picture? We're seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. I always love to emphasize this. With, see this? Can you, can you see this, pic, this picture? You see the young child sitting on the lap of the older person? That is the picture. That's a visual of how we are, our spirit men are in heaven. That's the position of power. We're seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, far above spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. That is who you are. That is who we are. We have to resist the devil from doing shakara with our lives. Making, you know, all these, um, make, threatening us. We are powerful people. A royal priesthood. We are peculiar. We have been called to show forth the praise, the power of the one who has called us to him. When you know who you are, when you know whose you are, you are free. You are free. Does anybody here want to enter into that new journey of discovery? Is there anyone here who is willing to take that step and say, I want to be in Christ Jesus today. I know who I am. I know who I want to be. I want to be that person of power. Shall we bow our heads? And if you have never ever told Jesus, I want to know you because I want to know who I am, I'm inviting you this morning to just raise up your hand just raise up your hand. If you are that person, I want to know who I am. I want to know you, Jesus. So just go ahead and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. I ask you to forgive me my sins. I invite you into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior from this time and for all of my lifetime. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to take a song. I love that song. I love the lyrics. So when I listen to songs, I'm, looking, I'm listening to the words. This, this song says, I know who I am. I am a person of power. Amen. Yes. And I invite all of us to rise up when the song is on and sing with the assurance, with the confidence of you know who you are.
a brethren, whilst we wait on the song, let's just stretch forth our hands to pray for our dear mother because the word that she has given to us today is a word in season. She has actually reminded us who we are and whose we are. So let's just stretch forth our hands. Every virtue that has left her, God should replenish it in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that anointing concerning her, the anointing upon her life will never run dry. God will uphold her. God will order her steps in the mighty name of Jesus. That this words that she has shared with us will not go against her in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Chosen generation, call for to show his excellence. All I require for life, all I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation, we are a chosen generation, call for to show. Amen. Amen. So today we are going to give and we are going to give cheerfully because God loves a cheerful giver. And if you are going to attract God's love, you have to give cheerfully. Please in front of you, you find your envelopes. And then also if you want to give digitally, please technical, can you put the, yeah, you can give through Zelle and you have the email address on there. And also you can give in person. And whilst we're getting ready, we're going to let our choir give us a danceable song to give cheerfully. Please, can you be on our feet? Glory, ready. 
before you today to present our tithes and our offerings to you in faith. Lord, we believe your word and we honor it by putting our faith into action through giving. We thank you for your blessing and we believe we we will have what you have promised us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we also continue to pray that those that were not able to give, Lord, you provide for them so that they will give in the mighty name of Jesus. Accept our giving in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let's please stay back for the announcement. Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God Salvation Center, Killeen. Please listen to the schedule of services and announcements as they may have changed. Sunday school is from 9.20 a.m. in person at the church. You are encouraged to attend. Worship service follows from 10 a.m. in person at the church, but streams on Facebook Live and YouTube. It is graduation season yet again. Congratulations to you and yours on this great achievement. If you, a loved one who's also a member of the church, or your dependent is graduating with the class of 2023, this is for you. Take out your mobile device, turn on your camera, and scan the QR code to register to be recognized. It is that easy. This is due by the 29th of May. A powerful series happening at Bible Study. Join us this Tuesday as we dig deep into the study of favor. Anchor Scripture, Psalms 5 verse 12, in person at the church on Tuesday from 7 p.m. See you there. You are specially invited to the 26th RCCG The Americas Annual Convention. Theme, Emmanuel. Ministering will be our Father and the Lord, and mother in Israel, Pastor E.A. and Pastor Folu Adeboye, Pastor James Fadel, Dunsi Noyeko, and other anointed ministers of God from the 14th through the 16th of June at the campground in Greenville, Texas. Please be reminded that the Youth Convention, Freedom, No More Bondage, will be holding on the same days and at the same venue. We are encouraging all our teenagers to register and plan to attend the youth convention. The entire trip, including transportation, feeding, and accommodation, will be covered by the church to empower our teenagers. Please send proof of registration to Pastor Dr. Simi for reservation and preparation. God bless you. Do you need a ride to church on Sunday morning? We got you covered. Call 240-838-6965 or 817- 703-7273 To pay your tithes, give your offerings, supporting the building project, paying your vows, and all other forms of giving. This can be done via Zelle to info at rccgsecolleen.org. Text to give and other secure methods of giving coming soon. Our morning prayer, command your day has been a blessing to many. Join us Monday through Friday from 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. as we start our day in prayer to the Most High God. See you there. This is a reminder for all parents to pick up their kids from the children's department at the end of service. Connect with us on social media, Facebook, RCCG Colleen, to watch live transmission and to view important information. Instagram at RCCGSEK. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, RCCG Colleen, and tap the notification bell to be alerted when content is uploaded and for virtual services and many more. God bless you. Technica, the video. Let's let somebody shout hallelujah. Get ready for an unforgettable experience at the 26th annual RCCG The Americas Convention, themed Emmanuel. 
Join us as we welcome the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God Worldwide, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. This is the year of doubles. Double blessings, double testimonies, double victories. And when the mighty breakthroughs begin to come, give us the lion's share. Also ministering, Pastor Mrs. Folu Adeboye, Pastor James Fidel, and other anointed ministers of God. It's three days of powerful worship, ministrations, and transformation. Come and be inspired by the spirit-filled worship of our guest psalmist, Dusin Oyekan. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name. Mark your calendars for June 14th to 16th, 2023, and join us at the RCCG Redemption Camp, Dallas, Texas, located at 515 County Road, 1118, Greenville, Texas, 75401. This convention is not just another event, it's a life-changing encounter with God. You don't want to miss it. Save the date. Come and experience Emmanuel, God with us. Praise the Lord. Please, like, if you want the church to transport you there and bring you back, the last day is always a vigil. And if you want to, the church to be responsible for taking you there, I'm bringing you back after the program. Kindly leave your name with uh, Brother James. Brother James, that's Brother James. And please don't just leave your name. If you are taking your children, put their names down. And you have till the end of this month to do so, so that we can plan for you. Praise the Lord. And secondly, this Friday is the last Friday of this month. If Jesus tarries and is our change of story vigil. So don't forget at 10 p.m. this Friday, if rapture has not taken place, we are going to be gathered here to pray to God. And the Lord Almighty will change our stories in the mighty name of Jesus. So at this time, can we rise to our feet? The Bible says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Numbers 14, 28, God said to Moses, As they have spoken in his ears, so will he do. So for the next one minute, I want you to say something in the ears of God. As you go into this new week, say something great, something you want God to do for you. He said, as they are spoken in my hearing, so will I do. Open your mouth this time. What a man cannot give you, God can give you. What is impossible with man? What is impossible with woman? God can do it. 30 more seconds. Make sure you open your mouth and declare into your new week. It shall be well with me. It is well with me. I will grow from glory to glory. I will share the word of the Lord. No more pain. No more failure. Open your mouth. Oh, Rebako Sotorogobo. It shall be well with me. Round about with my family, with the church of God. Five more seconds. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. As you have spoken in the ears of God, so will he do for you in Jesus' name. I don't know who you are, but this week is your week of good news. If that is for you, you better let your amen resound. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know who you are, but if you can say amen, because this month is our month of favor. God Almighty himself will favor you round about in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Is anyone fellowshipping with us for the very first time? Do we have any first time guests today? Okay. Oh, okay. You are welcome. You are welcome, ma'am. God bless you. Not you, somebody in the back. God bless you. As you have stepped here today, God Almighty will do something new in your life in Jesus' name. And our hospitality department would like to have a word or two with you after grace. At this time, can we share the grace and fellowship?
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fresh of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Before we share this, surely, I want to use this opportunity to say thank you to our parent in the Lord. She was the one that sent us here to come and start Salvation Center, Kelin, 17 years ago. And we are glad to have her. Like she said, this is home for her. So we are grateful, man. On behalf of Salvation Center, Kelin, one of your children, anywhere you see Salvation Center in the whole US, everything started through them, through her. Praise the Lord. Let's clap for her. Let's clap for her. God bless you, man. Now we can share the goodness. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. See you on Tuesday. Can't go? Do this to clear out stuck poop.